Good evening and welcome to the regular Fort Collins City Council meeting of February 12, 2013. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, the Lord's Prayer, and a moment of silence to our men and women serving overseas. <coughs> instituted by the department to recognize individual officers who have had an outstanding year. This award is based on felony arrests for burglaries in progress, drug arrests, and recovered stolen vehicles. This award is in remembrance of Myron Mike Dress, as we all knew him, who was a member of the Port Clinton Reserve Police and passed away after a short battle with cancer. Mike was a composite of a police officer as he was caring professional, and always there when needed. We wish to honor his memory, his service, and compassion by recognizing individual officers with this award. In 2012, officers accumulated a combined total of 16 lightning bolts being awarded departmentally. Nine were for burglaries in progress, 10 were for narcotics arrests, and one was for a stolen vehicle. The recipient for the Myron Mike Dress Award for 2012 is Patrolman Nathan Edmonds. Nate was hired in December of 2012 as a civilian dispatcher, reserve police officer, and later promoted to patrolman in June of last year. Nate is currently assigned to the afternoon shift, which is our 3P to 11 p.m. shift, and Nate was recently appointed as to one of our two backup detectives. Patrolman Edmonds exhibits all the attributes that make him the kind of officer that Myron Mike Dress was, and the department is very proud of him. He throws, he doesn't want to say it. Thank you. Congratulations, Nate. He faces all that adversity, but he can't do something. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make a comment about our police department. I had the privilege uh, to attend the police service um, for uh, Chief Hank Jacoby last night, and I want to tell you that I was extremely impressed at the turnout of the Portland Police Department for a man who is 97 years old and has been retired from our city for many years. And most of the guys on the force probably didn't know Hank, um, but they turned out and we had a wonderful, wonderful showing. 
from them and the Sandusky Police Force. And I just I would just want to thank you for honoring a man who served our city for a long time. And now it's the mayor's report. Are you gonna, okay? Okay. My, uh, my first State of City Address for 2012. It was that time of the year to re reflect on the year past as we head into the future. I must admit this will be all new to me. It isn't that I have not listed and evaluated the strengths of my own businesses. I do find it to be a great way to see if you hit your goals that you have made at the beginning of the year. The first and foremost important accomplishment this year in my belief is that I have surrounded myself with great people that equally share the desire to move the city of Port Clinton in a forward and positive motion. And for that, I am truly grateful. I'm not sure the best format without listing some of the things we have uh, succeeded in doing by department. I would like to start with our police department led by Chief Rob Hickman. The chief has had his hands full this year with many challenges before him, first of which involved the negotiations of the FOP contract that expired during this year. I know that this was the first time he had to deal with the negotiations from the other side of the aisle, so to speak. But for me, it was a great opportunity to see Chief Hickman not only work diligently, but also to witness his fair and impartial demeanor. The retiring of his staff, such as Sergeant Gaydash, with 35 years of service, Patrolman Robert Case, with 38 years of service, and Louise Bergman, after 36 years of service, continued to test the department with even more challenges. There was another individual who left the department for the Ottawa County Sheriff's Office for the Drug Task Force, whose name cannot be mentioned for obvious reasons. As the department changed this year, it also created opportunity for some advancements. The promotion of Sergeant for David M. Scott, Josh Wade Nelson, and eight with excuse me, both with eight years of service, was a welcome to some of those changes. Also having dispatcher Nathan Edmonds, James Sippity, and Daniel Glaird moving into the ranks of patrolmen, along with two new officers, patrolman Ronald Timmons and patrolman Ryan Cantor, were added to our police force. All of this movement created openings in the dispatch office. The hiring of Michael Yaklich, Rochelle Pine, and Bob Christensen filled those openings. If that was enough to keep the department busy for the year, Chief Hickman's belief in training for his department definitely assured the quality of the police department. Chief Rob Hickman, Detective Sergeant Corbin Carpenter, and Sergeant Joshua Nelson all became NARC-2 field test instructors. While Sergeant David Scott, Sergeant Joshua Nelson went through training and are now TASER instructors. And by the way, in order to carry a taser, part of the training is to undergo being tased 
so you have an understanding of what you may be administering to someone. I myself was more than happy to volunteer for the exercise. Some things are best left to the professionals. <laughs> we, don't, we now also have two backup detectives, Patrolman Nathan Edmonds and Patrolman Ronald Timmons, to help with workload. All these changes and adjustments in any department would undoubtedly cause major confusion and one would think of potential for morale problems. The facts are, and I'm pleased to say, this is the farthest from the truth. The direction of Chief Hickman has been well received and I believe that's because he's not just giving orders, but he lives by what he says. Department changes and growth has been nothing short of miraculous. I will continue on with the fire department. Any community, whether a large city, village, or township, no matter full-time employees or volunteers, I firmly and confidently put the Portland Fire Department up against any and claim them as to be the best of the best and will attest to their professionalism. This year alone, under the outstanding leadership of Chief Kent Johnson, has sponsored and certified five fire instructors through the state of Ohio. This allows Port Clinton Fire Department to provide continued education for the mandated training required by federal and state government for firefighters to maintain their certifications and at no instructor cost to the department. All class hours, a total of 90 hours over 80 weeks, were volunteered. With that, it is my privilege to announce the members that have passed. They are Trevor Johnson, Delbert Hatt, Lisa Ricciuti, Tom Sees, and Donald Ricciuti. The personnel of the Port Clinton Fire Department has continued to not only give up their time during fire and rescue emergencies, but give to the city and surrounding community tirelessly. Volunteering is a large part of their identity and they show it in many different ways. I only hit on a few instances from this year. The hosting of Safety Town, a four-day event of activities for children entering kindergarten involving Portland Police Department, North Central EMS, Portland City Schools, Ohio Department of Natural Resource, Ohio State Highway Patrol, and the Norfolk Railway, and continued participation in fire prevention, reaching over 400 people in our community, ranging from 3 to 103. Their dedication doesn't stop there. The training, like the police department, is the key to their success. The Chief Kent Johnson demands extensive training for all the personnel of the fire department to better serve this community and to keep our firefighters safe. Acquiring two training facilities in Portis Township and training those facilities with the Port Clinton Police Department and the Ottawa County Sheriff's Department proves his dedication to safety and the community. The Fire Department also hosted a Jaws of Life training day. The course was taught by Amicus Rescue Tools. And I'm not sure if it was Chief uh, Johnson's intuition, but only two days after the training, they were using the same techniques they had learned on a major motor vehicle accident in Portis Township saving the life of a trapped person involving a truck. Acquiring the state-of-the-art Jaws of Life equipment and purchasing new 200,000 pound cutters costed nearly $6,000, which was paid for by the Port Clinton Fire Department Association, then donated to the Port Clinton Fire Department, was by far money well spent. Rick Ramos, Fire Inspector, achieves his associate's degree in fire science. Another fire Fire new to the department, Cody Cook, achieved his Firefighter 1 certification, which took 1,500 hours over 15 weeks, and again, all volunteer. I have one suggestion, that is, next time you see one of the firemen, don't be afraid to say thank you for all the dedication and hard work, and remember, as Chief Johnson would say, this is your fire department. <clears throat> next, I'd like to give you some insight as to what is going on with our Portland Service Department. The beginning of this year was a challenge similar to the police department. The service department was also in negotiations with the city with local 20 Teamsters as their representatives. Adjusting to any new administration could prove to be a doubting task, but it was obvious the men of the service department were up for the challenge. A lot of new equipment soon came their way to help them to work more efficient and safer. We implemented a new way of repairing our streets by using what is called a hotbox trail, which holds hot asphalt. The men were trained and started to work from one side of the town to the other. Needless to say, this is a big job and well received not only by the workers, but by our residents as well due to the fact it is a more permanent repair. Over 200 tons of asphalt was used in patching our streets and all shoveled by hand. 
Other equipment to, new to our service department is a sewer camera. Once again, training provided to be a positive way of being effective in utilizing new technology. The images that were captured not only let us see exactly what we were dealing with in our sewers, but also save us costs associated with these kinds of studies as part of engineering assessments. It also helps us to prioritize the infrastructure needs for our streets and sewers. But even though we have taken large steps to be more effective in spending tax dollars and unexpected water main breaks, it is still part of our reality. 18 water breaks to be more specific, most of which were repaired under pressure as to ensure uninterrupted service to the residents and businesses in the city. This brings us to a better way of locating water leaks without large costs. Since we don't have the capabilities, the city has outsourced leak detection, which has uncovered 19 leaks, including 14 hydrants, two water mains, and two main valve leaks. All the repairs were done in-house, and the cost of leak detection was approximately $1,800. This has now become part of our maintenance program that will be conducted twice a year. Along with that, our service department has changed 254 water meters <coughs> excuse me, and radio read heads to increase accuracy and reduce man hours in reader meetings. The service department has helped to create in safer neighborhoods by removing 57 trees that were potentially overhead hazards. We even created a curbside pickup to better serve the residents of Port Clinton. The service department continues to be even more effective in maintaining our city by cleaning up our parks, along the shorelines, including the beach, moving brush and tall weeds that block the view we so much enjoy. The amount of work that has been done by the 10 men of the service department has shown that the leadership of Mr. Eric Peterson is more than just average. Mr. Peterson, without a doubt, lives and breathes poor Clinton. His dedication to our fine city shows through the accomplishments that he has been achieving, along with the men he works with. At the wastewater treatment plant directed by Ernie Isaac, keeping up with stricter regulations are a must and vital to ensuring a safer environment for us now and in the future. This is why receiving another perfect U.S. EPA lab performance test report is something we are very proud of. Ernie Isaac continues to look to the future.